In one of the latest Optic podcasts, it was actually formal saying Call of Duty, whether you're challengers, whether the top level in the CDL is such a day-to-day esport, and, and that fully came to fruition just late last night. In case you guys missed it, that being Optic versus Rocker, stage one, one of the worst performing teams was the Rocker, making recent changes, Major Maniac out, a young gun and standy in, and he has he has proven time and time again, I should say in Call of Duty League, it has been proven that these young guns, some of them are so hungry, especially especially in their debuts, uh, a lot of teams out there got to be eyeing challenger talent as opposed to to maybe some some friends of pros out there. Rocker proved just that point after a stage one performance that, of course, caused a change. I don't know if they'll be changing out anyone new in the recent times because they 3-0 Optic in their debut and Standy looked incredible breaking a 1.5 kd giving optic their first loss on raid hardpoint beyond that so many other things to watch as he legitimately carried this team to their victory and a sweep of optic chicago currently in the lobby and he's really only in competition with his good old buddy accuracy finally drops from the middle side of the map but very rarely do we ever see chicago get dominated in a respawn let alone a hard point like this one on raid as Chicago have yet to drop over in raid, and now they're nine seconds away from their very first loss. Final five seconds is going to go to Chicago over at the kitchen, but again, we rotate now toward the garage. In Minnesota, they're primed and ready. They are set up, attached. He falls from the front, but it's Priesta and the new roll. There's two, there's three as the ARs combine, and Minnesota winning wow. the opening hard point. In a dominant way. Yeah, she sent us to around 11. Not have a great performance in that opening hard point, but oh, how great has he been in Cold War. That shot is one. Be careful about, he does have the bomb. He's just not sure on where that other player is. Is he going for the flank? Is he going for the late rotation? See, Dashy just not overly confident in which place, what area to go, just because he doesn't have the visuals, he doesn't have the information, tries to go for the turn on to accuracy, but it is the Minnesota Rocker. And really dashing Envoy, they need to find, they need a sequence here, they need a play. Envoy finds the first one toward the top mansion side. Again, Rocker trying to separate themselves throughout the map. Got a whole lot of time left to work with, but the trophy goes down. Dashy, another pick from him. Slow and steady goes Chicago. One more coming in from Water Stairs. Despite not having any respawns left, that could be good. That could be good. Formal and Envoy, they find two. Still one on the flank. As accuracy drops as well, a possible clutching position for Chicago as it all comes down to Formal and Envoy. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of work. Formal falls and it all comes down to Envoy and Minnesota Rocker in their debut. And we have seen these young guns do this uh, in debuts quite often, actually take the opportunity and obviously they are hungry. They are young. They are making the top league and want to prove themselves worthy of the opportunity. We saw it last season with Awakening. We saw Insight have a strong debut with Ultra so far. And now, of course, with Standy having the best debut in the CDL of anyone out there uh, that I've seen as terms of newcomers and youngsters out there, it's going to be hard to beat that kind of performance against a team like Optic as well. It certainly is day-to-day. -day. We will see what Rocker do today today, and we'll see what Optic do day-to-day -to, -day to try and fix some of the mistakes made just late last night. It was actually really tough to see as well. Now, I understand Optic fans, are, it's a double-edged sword. They are so strong that the green wall, they got your back. The flip side of that, you got some of those same fans that love to critique. They love to coach. If you go to Scump's tweet, actually grab a cup of coffee and a cup of water. Go to Scump's tweet right now and check out all the coaching insight he has been given in the responses, whether it pertains to in-game strats, to coaching, to the fact they're making too much content or streaming scrims. Optic under a lot of scrutiny and a lot of fire right now. We will see if they can pick it back up and take on other teams, but Standy, I mean, claps to you. That was a very enjoyable performance to watch. We will see if he can keep that up. And, and along with that, you got to imagine being online makes these debuts a little bit easier of a transition as compared to going right to land, being on the big old stage against some of the biggest names in the game. I have imagine that did uh, of course a, a tribute to this but still the performance itself 
was just, it was stellar. It's tough to beat that. Now we're gonna take a dive back for the last part of this story three weeks ago. I actually was just tweeting a couple nights ago because it was crazy to me how fast this month has gone by. I show you guys this tweet that Courage sent out at Hastro. You remember that beef? If you guys don't, we did a full video breaking down the full beef. Go check it out if you want. But that tweet was over three weeks ago. That's how fast time is flying, and I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. This year is just going by so goddamn fast. It was actually Crim6, after I tweeted about it, after the fact, he responded because he was never on Twitter that day, and can you imagine if he would have been? As he replied, this was straight up one of the wackest things that Jack has ever said. A popularity check on a competitive esports team. And later in a response to you know why he was so late on this, apparently he was not on Twitter that day as they were scrimming and preparing from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you do remember, not any Empire guys were coming out to defend uh, uh, Hastro in that instance. But if you also remember, not many people were coming out to step in the way of Courage's firing line on Hastro. Uh, you know, people tried. I, I know that I made a few tweets because Courage came out of nowhere, man. Heavy hitters out there. Uh, but I, I can imagine of all the Empire roster, and I guess I'll ask you guys as well, if there is one player on the current Empire roster to actually stand up for Hastro and kind of has that pizzazz and flair, it would be Crim6. I don't think any of the other young guns on that roster are ones to probably take on that fight on social media. Could be wrong, but either way, it was one of the best back and forth we have actually seen in Call of Duty in a long, long time involving Courage and Hastro. You guys can take your sides, all right? I'm not here to, you know, rehash that. I'm just here to, of course, line up the fact that Crim6, luckily, was not on Twitter that day. But you guys can imagine if he did fire back that day, that would have been another video in itself, right? Can you imagine Crim6 versus Courage? It's one of those things, 2020, if I ask you for a little bit of a back and forth on Twitter, you probably wouldn't have said those two. But maybe in the future, if this ever happens again, if Hastro ever tweets again and starts a fire, hopefully Crim6 will be on Twitter. Until next time, what do you guys think about that? Optic upset, Crim6 a little upset three weeks late. Can't get much better than that. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. You guys know what to do. All right? Take a chug for me. I'll catch you back here next time.